I take the opportunity to welcome you um, before the panel for the interview of the board of the NYDA. Um, let me take the opportunity, Ms. Mbata, to ask you to make yourself comfortable. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, just relax, make yourself comfortable. Um, if you feel you are stressing a bit, take a sip of water and give us a nice big smile. Enjoy the interview. This is the important part that you must enjoy it. And I also want to then take the opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Marincia Gillian, Social Services in the National Council of Provinces. And I'm also the co-chair of the process for the filling of the vacancies for the NYDA board. Um, I will hand over to the chairperson in the committee room to introduce herself and all other members in the committee room. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Nampo um, Melelo. And uh, relax. My name is Nontantlang Nubendaba. I'm the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. Sia Wamgel. Over to you. We welcome you. Honorable uh, Masigo. Gia Bongagakulu, chairpersons. Thank you, chairperson. A very good evening to you, Ms. Bata. My name is Vicky de Masigo. I'm a member of the subcommittee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good evening, Ms. Mbata. My name is Otto Malika, a member of the subcommittee. You are welcome. Oh, you are sure to make your work. Nothing, kid. She's a home girl. Oh, no, um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, um, yes, uh, good evening to you, Ms. Mbata. My name is Louis Olompiti, and I'm a member of this particular subcommittee. Uh, warm welcome to you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Mbule Lopaha. Uh, I'm a member of this committee. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chairpersons, and uh, good evening, Mrs. Mbata. Ms. Mbata. My name is Telusom Kweba, the member of this committee, and you are welcome. Are you Mbata or Mbata? Mbata. Mbata. Oh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Mbata. Um, my name is Natasha Nchangweni. I'm a member of this committee and all of the best with your interview. Good evening, Sis Numpumelelo. I'm Buitumelo Joyce Maluleke, a member of the subcommittee. I'm Amkela Sisi Numpumelo. My name is Brenda Matebola. I'm a member of the subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you, members. Member Dongkeni. Siya kamke lambumi. I kamalam di mo nagusola gan Dongkeni. Welcome you, Mbumi. My name is Nagusola Dongkeni. I'm a member of this committee. Thank you, members, for the introduction. Um, member Mbata, I will I will ask you to briefly tell the panel more about yourself. Um, you can give us a historical background, your involvement in youth structures or youth empowerment, um, your academic records, and then also 
share with us why you are interested in committing your time and your energy to serve on the NYDA board and also share your knowledge um, with us what you know about the agency. You can you can answer the question. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. First and foremost, let me say thank you for granting me the opportunity to come and share my ideas with you uh, in terms of how we then further uh, improve and develop um, the NYDA. Um, yeah, on that being said, my name is Nompume Lompata. As it was said in the introductory, I'm a 31 year old uh, from Guruman in Sweden, a village in Sweden uh, called Sweden from Guruman in the Northern Cape. Um, well, I'm currently employed by the NYDA uh, since 2008, 2018 actually, since 2018, I have served in various positions uh, of the NYDA. Uh, basically, I would say that uh, in my involvement, I've just been in the program development design and delivery unit. Um, my academic background, uh, I, 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 I currently just, re I recently just completed my BCom honors degree uh, with the University of, of South Africa. I'm also uh, in position of a diploma in municipal finance management. Uh, I'm also currently registered uh, for risk as a for diploma, a uh, postgraduate diploma in risk management. Um, throughout my life, uh, youth activism has always been at the center uh, of my heart. I started off uh, at a very tender age, uh, being involved in uh, the Swedish cultural dance group. Uh, I also went in uh, as further as being involved in your love life. I was an impinchi back in high school. Uh, in tertiary life, uh, I also continued uh, with activism, youth activism, and uh, even led uh, in various uh, social and political formations, uh, such as being in the National Executive Committee of South African Student Congress. Um, uh, I'm also a home cell leader in the church. Uh, so everywhere where you'd find a young person uh, uh, that talks to development, you'd actually find Unumpumelelo uh, there. Um, I'm of the view that my academic background, as well as my, 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 the experience that I have, a, I started, in fact, working as an intern, a finance intern at Katalopele Local Municipality uh, in 2016. And then further in 2017, I was appointed to act as a risk manager uh, uh, in the same municipality. So I believe that my academic background, uh, my, my activism, uh, that has been inspired and shaped through the inequalities and poverty and underdevelopment that I grew uh, up in, uh, inspired me to, to then say, Ukuti, I, I want to, to, to better the lives of those that would be coming after us as well as my peers. Uh, I'm also a peer educator. Uh, I used to be tutoring. Uh, I still tutor every now and then in my spare time. Uh, I do that for free for young people. Um, one other thing, uh, during the pandemic, when we just started, uh, my friends and I, we said, we cannot just sit and then expect government to do everything. Uh, we then formed a small group of six, uh, we would uh, pop up 500 rents from our pockets uh, every month. And then we then adopted 10 f families uh, in Lerato Park uh, in Kimberley, where we would then be giving them uh, vegetables. We said ours would be a vegetable drive. And then after that, uh, beginning of this year, we realized that you no, know, we'd then be also creating a dependency culture in these young people. Then what do we do? We then said, no, rather instead of uh, let them profile themselves and let us see what skills do they have and what is it that they, they also want to do, because we could see through what we're doing that these young people still have dreams. And then what we did is that uh, we, t we take that money, we pay for them to, to if you want to open a tax shop, sometimes we give them that money. Uh, we, we ensure that we, 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 we stay with them for like a period of three months. The first one uh, was with the tax shop. We stayed with him for a period of three months, teaching him how to do his finances, how to do his books, uh, so that uh, when we leave, then he's able to then uh, fend for his family. And uh, most of these young people that uh, we're working with uh, are just youth-headed households. Um, um, so uh, I'd like to say that uh, basically um, 
I, I do have what it takes, uh, like I said in, 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 in my introduction, I do have what it takes, my academics, uh, the passion uh, and, and drive to assist young people, uh, as well as uh, my, 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 my experience, uh, both in finance uh, and also in youth, activity, in, in, in youth uh, development. I thank you. Thank you very um, much. For, um, is, um, I, I did skip something. I think I think I still have time. Uh, you okay. asked me what do I yes, you asked me what do I understand about the agency? Well, um yes. in my understanding of NYDA is that it came as a measure between the Umzombovu Youth Commission Youth Fund and the National Youth Commission. Uh, in doing so, they wanted to to come together and make a one-stop shop that would then be responsible for facilitating and providing youth with opportunities of employment and as well as improving the inclusion of youth in all space in, in, in mainstream economics through their uh, non-financial and financial uh, financial assistance as well as skills Time development okay. thank you um chairperson i will now hand over to you to take the, the hands in 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 the committee room for the members who wants to pose questions Thank you, Chair. I think the first question will be the NYDA Act and the National Youth uh, uh, Policy further highlight the principles that must be upheld to ensure youth development. In previous years, there had been a perception that the agency only serves certain section of the youth. So the question is, what can be done to change the negative perceptions amongst young people about the NYDA. How are, you, how are you going to ensure that the NYDA, under your leadership as a board member, will consistently abide and be guided by the principles of the youth development without any prejudice? Um. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chairperson of the session. Um, well, I would like to say uh, the perception can only be fixed through good governance uh, via the board. As a board, we would then need to ensure that uh, we adhere to number one uh, and comply to, your, to, 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 to all policies and documents that talk to good government, to good governance, uh, being your PFMA, your section 195 of the, of the constitution, your section one and two of the constitution, which mainly uh, talk about inclusivity of everybody, uh, as well as being guided by our Batupeli principles. As, 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 as a way to change the perception uh, one of the roles that uh, is, is highlighted uh, in the charter then says, uh, as, a as, as, as a board member, you need to identify key risk areas uh, that would then hinder uh, the, 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 the key risk areas and performance indicators uh, that would then assist Ukuti, uh, the, 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 the agency meets its obligations. In doing so, the perception on its own would have identified that the perception on its own is a risk, uh, poses as a reputational risk to the agency. Now, how do we then respond to that? Uh, I would then say that, uh, number one, we, 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 we go as far as um, ensuring that every young person on the corner of even uh, Henning Flay in Kuruman knows about NYDA. Reality is that NYDA has been doing a lot, uh, and the only other issue that would be one of its shortcomings would then be the issue of accessibility. Uh, with its very limited uh, budget, it has been doing a lot in terms of accessing everybody. And I believe that through now digitalizing uh, mainly uh, our, uh, our outreach uh, uh, programs, we'd be able to get to everybody, then working on this perception that we only uh, get to certain people. Uh, young people are crying a lot about accessibility, and I believe that uh, it would be mainly what we should uh, prioritize uh, in terms of changing this perception. Because of uh, some of them, it's 
it's not that uh, NYDA does not uh, assist everybody. It is just that they do not know of NYDA and they would hear about NYDA maybe from somebody that is closer to a city and then they would say that NYDA only uh, assists those that are there. Uh, we still have more to do as an agency indeed in terms of modernizing uh, our, 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 our approach uh, and how we then uh, uh, deliver our service products and services to young people. I believe that uh, the crux of it would be uh, in, 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 in accessibility. Thank you, um, um, Chairperson. <clears throat> Can you give an indication who is the next members? Honorable Malika, Honorable Baha, Honorable Matebula, Honorable Mkweba, and Honorable Ntlangwini. Uh, and last, the last Honorable is Honorable Mpiti. Thank you. In that order, you can continue, members. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Ms. Mbata, in your understanding, what are the roles and responsibilities of the NYTA board? Um, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, on, ma'am. Um, first and foremost, uh, the role of the board is to, would be to provide strategic uh, direction to the agency. Uh, apart from your appointing the C a CEO that is credible and one with a also um, having integrity, uh, apart from also uh, determining the values of the agency, uh, uh, the NYDA board also has a responsibility of seeing to me, uh, seeing to that, that their strategic objectives uh, are in line and also translate to operational objectives. Um, one would then be uh, addressing the inequality of, 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 of staff uh, um, that, that, that would then arise of, uh, and, 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 and organizational processes in such that uh, would, uh, how would it be addressed in, in to me would be uh, as NYDA, we need to look now into uh, looking at our policies, our HR policy. Currently, we've got uh, 39 managers in NYDA, whereby only 15 of them are female. So those are things that I believe that uh, the board should also look into. Uh, one mistake that we also make when we are board members or uh, when you are said you are a manager is that you just focus on the strategy and then not see how it, that it then goes down to even uh, 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 everybody understanding uh, um, what is expected of them. Uh, to me, this would also be done uh, through practical uh, things like, uh, as a board member, I would then ensure that uh, policies like your simple, basic, like a code of conduct should even be on the website of the NYDA. Our, our seeing to that our, our, our financial uh, and human resource uh, uh, processes are, are, are adequate and also are in line with uh, policies like your PFMA, as I, as I said earlier, your, 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 uh, as well as your, your, your basic human uh, resource uh, uh, principles. Now, um, the other, the other uh, role of, of the NYDA that it would have to play as a board is to ensure that uh, the NYDA uh, includes everybody there's inclusivity because uh, currently there's even a, a, a there's even a, it's not a perception a disabled young people uh, cannot access the nyda easily now we should then go far and beyond just ticking boxes of getting clean audits but also start looking at the impact that we have on the lives of young people like we have a responsibility of taking this good performance that we have in terms of compliance and in terms of your effective uh, uh, finance management system, we have a, a, a responsibility of ensuring that we translate that into now active and practical uh, positive impact on the life of young people. And uh, by doing so, I think that the board also needs to, uh, to a certain extent, be involved in, in things like uh, uh, 
the regular checking of your, your risk register, uh, seeing to that uh, risks are identified and mitigated. Uh, the, 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 turnaround strategy, the turnaround time for a young person when he goes to an, into NYDA uh, and then going out having, uh, been, uh, having been assisted. We also need to, to have that as, as, as a board. To me, good government, uh, it, it all goes, uh, goes back to that and not just or what is on paper and, do, and just ticking boxes. I believe that that's what would make, uh, uh, that's basically the roles and responsibilities of being, that comes with being in the board of the NYDA. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> There's a, a global issue around employment and opportunities for the younger generation. And this has been exacerbated by COVID-19 pandemic. While there are many issues facing the youth of this country, the most prevalent being youth unemployment. Do you foresee any signs of economic breakthroughs for young people? What should be done to address youth unemployment, which is standing at above 70% at this particular time? Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for me, uh, first and foremost, one should say that um, it is only through working together as both public and private sector that would then be able to combat uh, unemployment amongst youth and uh, also uh, positively empower young people. Um, I'm of the view that uh, the three sectors currently that I believe that uh, indeed they can, more can be done. Uh, unemployment cannot, uh, would not be able to fix it overnight. However, I'm of the view that we need, as, as a country, we need to focus more on our ICT we need to focus more on ag agriculture and agro processes, as well as mining. Uh, why these three sectors? Uh, like you said, uh, the global pandemic has shown us that uh, 4IR is also here. Through the global pandemic, we could uh, only live basically virtually. Now, what do we then do? Young people do have uh, ideas and they're very innovative. So I believe that we need to start encouraging them to also uh, not only focus on our traditional skills base when they go to schools and when, uh, uh, and when, when they go to varsity, also encourage them to go into things like your uh, um, uh, computer science, uh, studying uh, ro ro robotics, studying uh, graphic designing. Um, in terms of ICT, in terms of agro uh, agriculture, I feel that there's been a general neglect of agriculture by young people because of we do not see it as something that uh, we'd want to go to. We have been programmed as wanting to be in an office and all that. However, in agriculture, uh, uh, with, the, with the pandemic that came, we also saw um, what it, uh, uh, food security, the importance of food security. And I believe that if we then do also a uh, mass uh, processing in terms of agri, then we'd even have to, uh, we then be able to create mass employment. And then the other thing in terms of mining, I believe that we need to now start looking at industrialization, not only of mining sector, uh, as, as, as a country, we need to look into that level uh, of the economy. Uh, number one, in terms of your, your textile industry, your mining industry, uh, uh, and also uh, your supplier developer uh, management you also need to look into that uh, in, in terms of mining um, uh, and as well as uh, one would also want to say that a uh, government should not only play a uh, legislative uh, not fo only focus on legislative roles but also more on productive uh, the productive side of the economy and private sector should then also assist in terms of coming to get coming on board and not only leading in job creation but also uh, ensuring that it focuses more and uh, improves uh, and assists a lot on, on on youth development and training because of what we've realized is that um private sector is not really into that and you just get that it's only government that would be focusing on that and in terms of your your internships and 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 and, and etc however when you then get to uh, mining uh, 
young people would then not have the relevant skills to then be employed within these mines uh, or to even uh, be able to supply a, a whatever that would be needed at mines. Now, if we looked at to, into that, all of us is, is a country, I believe that we'd be able to curb uh, poverty, number one, because then we'd be able to create employment. Uh, and then, yeah, um, it's, I, think, I think, yeah, it's through partnerships like that that would then be able to be able to uh, combat and fight uh, youth unemployment. It's a follow up to your responses on youth unemployment. And I think that um, I'm very happy that in your introductory remarks or responses, you had noted that you are currently with the NYDA and uh, program two, which is the program design, development and delivery, am I correct? Yes. So now what strategy is the NYDA, you know, applying to target unemployed youth with disabilities? Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, Currently, uh, not only to disabled youth, um, I think you know that initially the, the NYDA had what we called a jobs officer who would then uh, be collecting CVs of young people uh, and placing them uh, at, at times uh, into learnerships uh, and ver in, in various departments. Now, what the NYDA has done, it has realized that even doing that, uh, young people themselves could not necessarily all access us. Number one, there was a, a little bit of red tape. You know that when you come, a young person had to come with a taxi coming to town and drop off a CV, at times they did not have that. Now what we have now as the NYDA is what we call, a, a, we also in partnership with, 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 with I'm present is that we now what we, we have now moved to what we call SA Youth a data. It's free data site whereby a young person can just upload their CVs. There are different kinds of your, sectors of employment there and then you then even match your skills as a young person with what is there so now uh, to me uh, that on its own then says nyda is able to access everybody not only uh, the, the 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 disabled one uh, uh, but each and every young person out there and then number two uh, I would then say that one of the strategies that I think that I would advise as, as when I'm in the board is that we should also look into having our entire website as the NYDA to be f a data free website, whereby a young person would not even need data to access a, our website. Uh, number two, uh, also ensuring that whoever then that applies at the NYDA, uh, I'd also what would want to say that uh, our our, our even our grant system itself uh, the, there's this trust, uh, our, our requirements for a person to get a, a to get funding a uh, to a certain extent does disadvantage others young people live on a daily basis mouth to mouth a uh, hand to mouth uh, businesses like your small businesses now most of them do not even have a, a bank a, a bank account a, a business bank account However, that is one of our requirements. I'm of the view that we should then be able to say uh, uh, as the NYDA that for a young person to, who is just starting a business, to then be able to access our business registered or not, uh, as long as they're able to prove, even if it is with their personal bank account, that they have been doing this business and they have been feeding, a, 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 they have been able to to sustain themselves with that should then uh, be able to be enough to say that then we can start uh, maybe with a grant process and start training the young person like I believe that we'd all know that with the NYDA you'd first have to go through training uh, which is your uh, and then from there then be able to, to to be given a grant there's no person that would just give out money and not knowing that you'd be able to know how to use the money so yeah uh, so I'm, I'm of the view that the NYDA is on the right track in terms of uh, trying to access everybody, uh, more that there's more that can still be done, though. Thank you, Ms. Pata. Chairperson, is there still um, more members to ask questions? 
Yes, Chair, we just started. Uh, I think the next me honorable member is Honorable Mkweba. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Ms. Mbata, the NYDA provides primarily for the NYDA as a unitary structure, responsive, responsible for implementation of youth development programs including the mainstreaming of uh, youth development activities by all stakeholders. Then, uh, Ms. Mbata, what will be your strategies or your plans would you invent to ensure the agency effectively implements youth development programs? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. No, 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 I'm saying what will be your strategies or your plans would you invent to ensure the agency effectively implements youth development programs? Now that uh, you, you are most a staff of the NYTA and you know what the act says in terms of making sure that there's a youth development uh, mainstreaming by all stakeholders. So what would be your strategies or your plans to make sure that uh, it, it efficiently implement youth uh, development programs? Um, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Uh, as a board member, to effectively, to ensure that a uh, programs that we have are done so effectively uh, I would then uh, propose that, number one, we look mainly into uh, education as the NYDA uh, and as a board. Uh, that would be first my, 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 my contribution, that we look into education and skills development. Uh, the NYDA is said that it's supposed to assist young people in, in all sectors. But what we have doing, been doing over the years as the NYDA, we had mainly focused on small business uh, development uh, uh, and, and, and to a certain extent neglected uh, skills uh, development, of which uh, I believe that we need to really uh, go back and tap into that as, 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 as the NYDA. Because of number, number two, uh, not every young person would want to be an entrepreneur. And not every young person that goes into the NYDA is looking for a grant. Number, uh, we, we used to have what was called a career guidance as the NYDA. Yes, we still have a programs like job preparedness, a, a training, we still have life skills training. However, I think that we need to go back and have actual career guidance as the NYDA, uh, because of it, it, it is online. However, a lot of young people, when they do it online, they struggle with it. That's one thing that I noticed. Uh, uh, I used to be an intermediary at the NYDA. So as an intermediary, at times I would have to assist young people in terms of uh, everything. As an intermediary, you, are, you basically uh, have to know uh, all the corners uh, that uh, you can be able to assist young, a young person over and above what you get paid to do. Now, what, 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 what I, I, I would then say is that, we, like I said, uh, education and skills development we need to go back to that as, as the NYDA, ensuring that um, our, our Solomon Masangu Trust, uh, our Solomon Masangu Bazaris is back again, uh, and, and ensuring that uh, it can, any young person is able to access that. Uh, number two, uh, apart from uh, education, we then uh, also uh, be, be being uh, there for young people, because like I said, um, Youth, youth development is, 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 quite, is quite vast. Some young people are there and uh, they don't know where to go to uh, in terms of when they have issues, uh, not, not, not only with education, but even personal issues at home. Uh, I believe that young people should also advocate more of that. Uh, a typical example uh, would then be uh, 
for an example of other challenges that uh, would then be facing young people, uh, such as, yeah, let me say, access, access to health. A young person uh, is in Sweden, not knowing uh, that uh, she's in Sweden, not having adequate uh, access to health. Uh, Sorry, there are. Uh, Chair, the next honorable member is Honorable Matebula. Yes, Chairperson, um, just brief because the time is running out. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chair. Ceci Nompumelel. The research showed that in our country, young people are still excluded to participate in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. We have inter entrepreneurs who produce goods, but they don't have access of markets and finances. If you are elected to be a board member, what can you do to assist such entrepreneurs? Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, First and foremost, uh, it is indeed true that uh, young people are complaining, but I believe that what we need to do as the NYDA, uh, we do have partnerships with, a, 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 with, with, with institutions like IDC, we have partnerships with institutions like CIFA and CIDA. Uh, but what I think that we need to do now going forward is that our relations should not be only program-based. But we should also maybe go into something like a, a rent to rent type of an approach. Uh, say uh, in our stakeholder meetings that we'd be having with, uh, with these different partners in terms of trying to assist the young people uh, because of, like you know, the NYD has been underfunded for quite some time. Uh, so it is a reality that uh, NYD would not be able to assist everybody, but NYDA could never turn back a young person that's seeking uh, for, for assistance. Now, what I'm saying is that uh, we could have a pound to pound. For instance, uh, as an NYD, we used to have, we still do have what we call market linkage, whereby when we fund you uh, as the NYD, and then we realize that uh, whatever assistance that we gave you maybe was not enough to meet your business uh, requirements, we then try to, to link you either with a pri in private sector, uh, even with other government departments that are able to give you more money uh, so that you are able to, uh, to, 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 to then attain and, and get what you want as a young person. However, I'm saying that um, this relationship, when it's pound to pound, we then be able to say, IDC, if a young person from NYDA uh, gets maybe 10 rent, because uh, that's what maybe NYDA would be able to give a young person at that time, uh, but you guys can be able to give 30 rent, then we should then have that relationship uh, to then say, you know, once you've been through the NYDA process and we have then seen that um, you are able to run your business, we should, it should then, uh, there should be less red tape for that young person to then proceed maybe to IDC and a, 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 or any other institution that would be out there to assist that young person. I believe it is only through that, like a seamless approach uh, in, in, in all these institutions that we'd be able to to get to a lot of young people. Like uh, you correctly said, uh, even with the pandemic, um, about 32% of SMMEs said they had to retrench young people. Uh, uh, so we do have now probably an increase of young people, number one, that are now uh, out, of, out of business and young people that are currently unemployed. So I believe that it is only through that a seamless approach that would be able to uh, all come together and combat uh, that uh, Comrade. Thank you. I heard that uh, no. NYDA has been, has been underfunded. Why do you think it's been underfunded? What are your expectations in, in terms of the funding of NYDA? Um, thank you very much for that. Um, the NYDA for the past couple of years uh, was even funded uh, uh, quite less. You would get that in terms of our targets. Uh, in training, you then be expected to train a, let's say, hypothetically speaking, 2,000 young people. And in terms of grants, which is what mainly brings young people to the doors of NYDA, 
our target because of the, 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 the finances, the budget that we have, would then be saying that you can only fund about 40 young people uh, in a year as a province. Now, these two together does show you that there is really a, a, a need for us to increase, uh, uh, it's either uh, we decrease the, 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 the training and increase the grant side, uh, but I believe that this, this, this two together, because of they go hand in hand. For a young person, they go through training. From training, uh, it's because of they want to have a, a, a business and run their business. But then they come, that is why there's even a backlog uh, of, 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 of grants that are sitting in offices of the A and NYDA because of, at times, we reached our targets within the first quarter of the financial year. Then we then have to go out uh, to private sector and also obviously other government departments to get more funding for young people. Uh, but uh, all in all, uh, I believe that the NYDA fund, I know it has been increased currently. Uh, within the past, uh, it really NYDA, I must applaud also the previous board and uh, the CEO that uh, they've been able to, uh, to achieve all the targets uh, that were set in the strategic plans. Uh, with the little resources that uh, the, com the, the institution has been getting. Okay, thank you very much. Chair, I think uh, 45 minutes uh, is finished. Yes, yes, Chairperson. Um, Masimpata van Kuruman and in the World Cup. Bye bye, thank you. From Kuruman in Northern Cape, thank you very much. I want to wish you all of the best with all your plans for the future. It's really good to have you with us. Um, is there any question that you would like to ask the panel? Maybe even before. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, Chair. Uh, what I wanted to ask Unumpumelelo uh, is that uh, she's currently employed full time. Ne? Are you permanent? Mm -mm. But do you know that the board is not permanent? Mm -mm. So we are prepared to risk. Um, yes, I, I am prepared to risk. Um, uh, in my in my the rest of my life, um, when I even left uh, the municipality uh, on an acting post to uh, a position that was even lower, uh, that was within the NYDA, it is because of that. Uh, I said I want to be uh, in the NYDA and I want to assist in policies uh, of how we in policies in South Africa. That is why. Uh, my, my focus, even in terms of my studies, when I did my dissertation was in um, development economics, and I'm now doing risk management because of this uh, is the career path that I want to take. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Mpata. Um, um, is there any questions that you have for the panel? Um, no. Um, just to say thank you for the opportunity. Um, when I started off, I was a bit panicked, but um, I must say the process is free, it's fair, and you did assist me a bit to, to relax. So uh, good luck to others that would be coming, and thank you very much. You guys must be tired, and you'd be here for the whole week. Um, yes, um, all the best to all of you as well for the rest of the week. Um, that's all. Baie, baie dankie. Um, jy is verskoon, dame.
Uh, Chairperson, the candidate is here uh, and uh, is our last candidate for today. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Malan. I want you to relax. Sit a bit after hour. Drink a bit of water as you be seen of us. I don't know. Relax. Be yourself. Um, Mr. Malan, please give the panel your best smile. And um, I, will, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Marincia Gillian. I'm the chairperson of the Select Committee of Health and Social Services in the National Council of Provinces. And I'm also the co-chair of this process to um, select the members of the NYDA board. I will hand over to the chairperson who's in the committee room with you to introduce yourself and other members in the room. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good evening, Mr. Malan. My name is Nontlantlang Mubendaba. I'm the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. I'm co-chairing this panel with the uh, Honorable Chair of the NCOP, uh, Honorable Gillian, uh, you're welcome. Uh, Honorable Masiko. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairpersons. Good evening, uh, Mr. Malan. My name is Figile Masiko. I am a member of uh, this subcommittee. I must say that uh, as the last candidate, um, we are a bit tired, but um, your quote just lifted our spirit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chairpersons. Good evening, Mr. Malan. My name is Audra Mavika. I'm a member of the subcommittee. You are welcome. Thank you to the Chairpersons. Uh, very good evening to you, Mr. Malan. Uh, my name is Louis Olompiti, and I'm a member of this committee. Thank you, Chairpersons. Um, good evening, many. My name is Mbule Lopaha, a member of this committee. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Malan. My name is Telesom Kweba. I'm the member of this committee, and you are welcome. Good evening, Mr. Malan. Uh, my name is Natasha Nklangweni. I'm a member of this committee. Um, all the best with your interview. Thank you. Babu Malan, in the evening. We do my law choice, my will like it. We do not have a committee. Honorable member, uh, who's out, uh, ne? Honorable Matebula, where is she? Honorable Matebula, she, here she comes. Uh, she's a part of the, she's a member of this panel from the NCOP. Uh, uh, over to you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Member Dungeni. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Mr. Malan. My name is Noguzola Ndongeni. I'm serving in this committee. Thank you. Thank you, members, for that introduction. Mr. Malan, um, I want you to introduce yourself to the panel. Tell us who is Mikalo Malan. Give us a little bit of your academic history background, involvement with your with the youth uh, um, development or empowerment. And then also can you share with the, board, with the panel why you are interested in committing your time and energy to serve on the NYDA board in South Africa and also share your knowledge with us, what you know about the agency. Thank you. 
Is, is, is he from Michel's plane? Che? No, he's not from Michel's plane and he's also not white. <laughs> like his surname. <laughs> and he can, yeah, he can give us his, uh, um, um, tell us more about him, Che. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, good evening, um, Ms. Marinja Gillian. And thank you for. Uh, very good evening to you, and Lubenda, of course, the joint chair of the session, but also the chair of the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. A very good evening to the multi party parliament we seated here tonight. A very good evening to all the members, and thank you for the introduction. Um, th it's a pleasure to know that my jacket could lift some spirits, and it's a pleasure to know that at least I'm not expected to be white this time around. So, honorable members, allow me to introduce myself. The name is Mikalo Milan. I am indeed a Cape born colored from the Western Cape province, raised in a diverse environment, in diverse setting, and diverse background. The reason why I want to explain the part of diverse is because our last encounter I spoke is Kos and Jekanglin with Kaba Kaba. And it is, to, it is to ascertain the important fact that. I am indeed a colored who was raised within a Kosa custom and practice within the home that I am, and that is what makes me a diverse individual, but also the first part that makes me, a, make me believe that I could be a candidate who's suitable for this. For in me, there is diversity. I am indeed affluent in English, Afrikaans, and is it Kosa? I could say a fourth language talking nonsense, but let's leave that. <laughs> so that's the three proficient languages, of course, good in reading and in writing. Um, I'm a, I would like to introduce myself as a young person, very young, of course, like any other of the young persons who we aim to work for through this agency, I too am young and the only child of my late mother, who was a stalwart in her own, own right, a Lillian Goyi of her own time, a clothing worker and struggle veteran. I am, of course, a mother and father. They would call me hashtag Kaz dad, Kaz mom, because I had to lead and head our household as a at a very young age, the age of 19, raising three cousins. The youngest now is 14 years old and the other two have matriculated and done. However, Chairperson, allow me to introduce myself in such a way that I satisfy the, even the criteria that brings me to this point by just breaking up a bit and improving on where I was before, because that is why I have this notepad in front of me, just to improve on those areas. Um, I am indeed a, facilita a facilitation developer, and I will touch more on why I say that. I'm, of, of course, also a youth developer and a community activist within my own right. I'm also involved in labor practices and labor emancipation of working class members. I'm a trade unionist, of course, and I was birthed and groomed by the South African Clothing and Textile Workers Union affiliated to COSATU. And that is what I'd like to bring forward to the committee as being Mikhail Milan, a young holistic leader who is involved in every sphere of society possible and where one can. On community involvement and youth involvement, I've been part of the Representative Council of Learners from a young age, which is the RCL, as you would know as the SRC, I've served as chairperson thereof. Atlantis Youth Development Forum, Community Development Forums is where I've also been party to for the sake of youth development. I've also been a member of the CPF by virtue of being um, there for the safety of young people and schools. Like any other young person, I'm also involved in street committee activities within the community for our safety and our involvement. And especially if you come from a customary background, like someone who is in Elokshini, you obviously know Imi Panga, Indwe Zintli, Indwe Zitanega, you traditional, we are involved. I'm there from a young age. There's a Kosa saying that says we are Papa, and I think that that's what they always used to call me, for too young to be involved in such stuff. As I continue, Chairperson, also, I'm a radio presenter for Heartbeat of the Community 107.9 FM. It's a radio station I was involved in at the age of 14, running programs and initiatives on the radio station that speak about the social challenges that young people face, engaging on the challenges youth face on drugs and teenage pregnancy. And this happened in 2009 when I just one day walked out of home, went to the radio station and told the station manager, I believe that, I believe Ms. Watson, I can be part of this group of presenters and I still am a volunteer to that. So I'm part of a lot of um, facets, of course, a member of society, a member of the church, very active within the church and the environment. And I think that's important if you're a young person who believes in the development. Over to academics, Chairperson, as I get to the conclusion before you say time, I hold a diploma in practical labor law studies from the University of Cape Town. And this diploma was not attained based on being in a certain working position and being told you must do it for the imperativeness thereof. I was always the kind of young man within the confines of the trade union who raised my hand for any opportunity if there was. I also hold a high certificate in project management as taken as a received from the University of Free State. 
and more importantly also a higher education certificate in office management um, and the reason why i have all of these certificates and i want to inspire young persons who are watching me here tonight is that when i passed matric i didn't have the right results to enter into university and to study a law degree i cried of course felt like a failure but never gave up I continue to work hard and continue in youth activism, networking and being part of every process and knocking on doors and seeking advice. I then went and got all of these certificates as a means to create my portfolio, which is indeed what you've seen in my extended skills CV that I've sent to you and to this committee members. With that said, I was then able to apply to the recognition of prior learning program at University of the Western Cape. I am a penultimate year law student. I've only got one more year to go in terms of attaining my law degree. As I conclude, I want to satisfy Honorable Member Fikile Maseko. I know that in the meetings that you've had previously, when you dealt with the criteria towards this process, one thing she raised is something she's passionate about and wants to see in the NIDA members, a member who's been part of decision-making structures similar or more closely to that of the National Youth Development Agency. I can state to you, as I've stated on my CV, I'm a former chairperson of an organization called the High Schools Program that is aimed at building leaders. It is no different to NIDA. The only difference that NIDA is at a national level, it is at a local level. NIDA has perhaps a huge amount of revenue that it uses. I was at the age of 15 years old, I gave oversight over monies that is largely to one million yeah, or so within the organization. Apologies, Chairperson, not nervous at least this time around. It's because of time, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> over to you, Chairperson. I think that's where I can stop for now. And just lastly, Chair, if I can squeeze it in, I'm currently the SGB Chairperson involved in structures of school governing body as per my cousins. I am the Chairperson currently of Kensington High School and previously St. Rayfield's Primary. And those are structures that I can say, Ms. Maseko, governed by statutory legality and I've been party to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Malan. Chairperson, I will now over to you so that you can handle the questions in the committee room. Okay. Uh, honorable members, uh, Honorable Ndongeni, Honorable Mkweba, uh, Honorable um, Piti, Honorable Ntlangwini, and Honorable Maluleke. So, God to leave. <laughs> She's Honorable Masiko. Okay, over to you, Honorable Members. Honorable Mpiti. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Uh, I, I didn't think you would come to me first, but uh, nonetheless. Um, Mr. Malan, you know, we've had quite a number of, of people come before us today and speak about um, ideas that they have. And my particular interest um, is really residing around the informal sector and young people who are operating within that space. Now, if you look at the NYDA and the thresholds of funding that they provide to young people, um, there's about four. Um, and the first one is set aside for young people who are in the informal sector, and it's capped at 2,500 Rand. Do you believe that more can be done in terms of empowering and developing young people in the informal sector? And should you be appointed into this board, do you think the cap of 2,500 Rand as a means of the only funding that a young person who, let's say, has a sneaker washing business, a gas, or a young person selling ama veg, do you think that is sufficient? And what would you do about it? Should you be appointed? Thank you. Bye, danke, Honorable Piti. Thank you for the question. It, it, it ultimately starts, of course, with looking at the objectives of the National Youth Development Agency as the prescripts are prescribed within the statutory law in terms of Section 2A to, to subsection, B, uh, subsection D. It starts there in understanding what are the environments that young people find themselves in. Because in a day is clear research and understanding what are the challenges or what is the what 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 what, what entails, what, what does the informal sector entail? In understanding that as a as a board member and as a member of the collective, it would be then important to take those young persons and young people and link them up to the important stakeholders that the National Youth Development Agency is party to by virtue of its position within the Department of Women, Women Youth and Persons with Disabilities. The amount that you speak of is indeed a limited amount. One of the arguments that I've always had and the contentions I've had outside and just engaging with young people 
is that I try to understand why is it that the agency always has the concern around it, there's a certain amount of budget, it can only provide a certain amount of money for young, student, young people, whether it's formal or informal, and that is all it has. For me, there, we lack strategy. My assurance to you is to say, if I have to make it into the board, one of these things I will look at in strategic planning is looking at the simple basic fact that the National Youth Development Agency is an agency of a department in government that ought to have been engaging with small business, ought to have been engaging with tourism or any other sector that impacts on that young person's business and be able to link that young person up with those key sectors in order to give the needed support. Now, let's say the scenario is that that's all that can be given to the young person. Let's say at ESA, I wouldn't want it to be that way. And that's the only amount that can be given to the young person. I personally would go the extra mile to engage Minister Kubuto Chaveni and say, look, Minister, I know that CIFA is there. I know that the IDC is there. I know there are various other structures. I would put the young person at ease in understanding that this is not where we are stopping. This is simply to show you that the National Youth Development Agency gives you the attention and is giving you the needed support and guidance. And furthermore to that, we, have, we are now going to take your documentation and send it to the important parties who are within CIFA, the important parties who are within the different stakeholding areas who will also give you further support and financing. What I also further believe is that if we had to be in a scenario where now we can provide more than the said amount, it would not possibly be necessary for us to even emphasize that amount be given even from us as a national youth development agency. Because in that, we can use our partners and their assistance and support in providing the needed funds that would lead us to not using much of the funds that we have just in the direction of business, but use those funds as a means to capacitate even the young person who's not even open a car wash, who's not even open a tacky or a laundry company or a nanny company, and use those funds to provide capacity building and training on what businesses entail and what businesses are. And in explaining it that way, members, I'd like you to just picture how you could look at that at a provincial level or local level. So you have these young persons who need the funding, you have those who do also need it but don't have the right direction but need the capacity, and you have the funding that you have to support them, and in doing so, you then have a structure of young persons who are part of a youth business forum, and you're able to report back and forth, monitor and evaluate how far they've come in their success. In that way, you have a national youth development agency that not only deals in just being a consultative body that gives donations or funding, but it is a body that is able to satisfy the prescripts of Section 2 of NIDA Act, and that is to holistically develop the young person. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Peter. I hope that answers you. No, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, Mr. Malan, the National Youth Policy is a cross-sectoral policy aimed at effecting positive youth development outcomes amongst young people at local, provincial, and national levels in South Africa. Can you share with, with the panel your understanding on the objectives of the national youth policy and how the board could aid with its implementation? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Mkweba, um, Mam Telus Mkweba. I like that you mentioned that important part, that the policy in itself is a generic umbrella that is overlapping onto various other sectors nationally. So it, it, it is like the country. Let's look at the country. The constitution in terms of section two is the supreme law of the country. It's the main constitutional law that governs various other laws that are beneath it. Then you have the policy that's also right there on top. And the policy is then linked to various other new policies that come forth like the integrated youth development strategy like your yes empowerments that are all that also are also policy governed you then have the policy with its objectives that are very clear and they are not far from the objectives in the NIDA act it is to empower develop it is to provide strategies that would look at emancipating the young person and need, giving them the needed skill to understand what is what they need as tools to empower themselves and to furthermore be able to use institutions of government in order to be partisan to an activity that seeks to take young people in a certain direction. Now, Mam Gweba, allow me to be constructively critical, and I think it's important that I put it that way, Chair, and say constructively critical. So I don't like exlati commit and exlati manti. But one of my criticisms is that if you have the national youth policy that is there, the exact existence of the National Youth Development Agency is exactly to ensure that they further the interests and the objectives of the National Youth Policy or the policy document in its entirety. And how do you do that? 
Now, you asked me a second question as to how would I go about implementing it. If I had to walk into the NIDA office tomorrow and my first meeting with the board, I don't know, okay, what designation, I won't be a prophet and say where I am. It would be important for me to remind the board that the agency has continued to be a structure that provides funding to young people, and of course it's received clean audits based on that. However, clean order doesn't always mean that you've met your constitutional prescripts. If we ought to be able to go to the drawing board, strategize, and create programs for the National Youth Development Agency, programs that are aimed at developing young people. I can make a typical example, Mam Kweb. You have the National Youth Development Agency office in Cape Town, Golden Acre, that is empty. When I was 14 years old, not even knowing what the National Youth Development Agency is, there was one also empty in Atlantis, where I was a lead at. And I know that this is where Honorable Pete is very passionate, because I know previously in the meeting in May, in the Portfolio Committee meeting, Honorable Pete raised a lot of the concerns when the committee was dealing with the PPAs and all the concerns, because I know that um, Honorable Pete is passionate about it, he raised the concern that these offices are empty. Now, if we ought to satisfy the national youth policy, the document in itself, we must be able to be a youth development agency that not only provides funding in business and has offices opened in January, February for, for NESFAS applications and assisting young people. We must be able to say that the National Youth Development Agency is supposed to and obligatory supposed to have a leg that looks at youth development and capacity building. Once it has that leg, it's then able to infiltrate in young persons even at school level, creating programs where they are partisan to it and they are the leaders to those programs. Go back to basics, picture it. The National Youth Development Ag um, Agency peer educators, the National Youth Development Agency groundbreakers. These are simply young people who are part of the RCN leadership structures on schools who form part of us all meeting the objectives of the national youth policy. In that way, the National Youth Development Agency can go to bed and sleep at night knowing it's developed a, a, a simple, cohesive program that runs annually, that brings in young people, makes them involved, because through that, we not only have young people come to the NIDA office, it becomes a buzz, it becomes full. And in that way, young people are able to come and use the National Youth Development Agency as a resource. And the National Youth Development Agency at the provincial level, even at local, is able to say, Mam Kweba, we want to invite you over, man. We have young people here who are going to run a business and they started something up. They didn't know what they knew before until they came to NIDA. We gave them the needed assistance and support. Can you come with us? We are going to this area and that area. If you take the National Youth Development Agency office alone, chairperson that's here at Golden Acre, it is surrounded by Cape Town High, Harold Cressy, Trafalgar, Monte Vista, it's our crown by Gardens Commercial. Those are all high schools. And if you're able to run programs that are strategic enough to pull them in, so that they no longer walk past NIDA office to the deck, sorry, the deck is called the taxi rank. They don't walk to the past the taxi rank looking at this office as if they just heard of it or don't know it. But they come to it and see it as a resource hub, as a hub of intellectual property and for them to emancipate and grow themselves. In that way, I believe, Mam Kweba, we will be able to give expression to the policy and we'll be able to meet all the standard requirements set in. Does that answer you, ma'am? Thank you, ma'am Kweba. Chairperson, um, Honorable Baha is making me laugh. He's laughing. I don't know. It's you. you it's you. You are busy patronizing my members. Uh, next honorable member. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, Mr. Malan, um, I can attest to um, the wrong, uh, um, what is this word? People thinking that you are actually white and not white. My previous, my, my maiden surname is Low. And when I used to go for interviews, the one interview, uh, the one interview, the lady told me straight, we actually thought you are white. So I, I know the feeling and, and you have to explain uh, several times. Luckily, my husband came and, 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 and uh, um, saved me and gave me a win. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I, I, I don't need to actually explain as much. You can even know that and see on the scene I'm actually African. Um, Mr. Um, Milan, the NYDA have been crowded by negative perceptions um, a lot in the media of a young people itself and also been um, having this dark cloud over its um, existence that there's a lot of political interference into the NYDA self. Um, so if you were to be given a chance to being a board member, 
um, what will you bring to the table to ensure that that negative perspective uh, perception out in the public currently are addressed and that white one um, young people know they have a an agency that they that is accessible to them even to the deepest deepest rural areas of our country of young people trying to make a business out of say for example mere spinach that they are building uh, are planting in the backyards that they uh, can be able to sell it at a Woolworths and a pick and pay and so forth and it's on the market and it's accessible thank you very much I would, I would, I would, I would, in essence, say by donkey my gefal genoot, because these are situations that we indeed find ourselves in. I would want to believe at this current juncture, in getting your question, um, um, honourable member, I think I may have answered the first part to a certain extent by what I've presented in other answers to other members. I'm hoping that gives you a certain confidence as to what Mr. Milan will be able to offer and bring to the table. Um, the perceptions and the negativities and the criticisms. I'm not going to sit and lie. I've been one of those young persons who has been an activist in the communities, who's played a pivotal role and who's had a cry and concern to say, but what is happening? What is being done? And this is stemming from the year 2008, 2009. That's how long I've come with it. But because I'm an optimist and a person who believes in being critical and constructive, if you can't beat them in trying to change the ideology or mindset or concept, join them and try to be the add the change inside to, 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 to provide the direction that is needed. Of course, you are right in your analysis that you're saying is a perception of negativity. It all happens because, and this is my belief, members, I want to be clear, and you may want to, to debate with me and say, are you sure will it be possible? I speak on proof, and I speak based on having a, led at the age of 14, 15, two terms, a similar organization like this one. What the agency simply requires is a leadership that can say, we are board members now. We are now going to meet with committee members all of these joint committee members, if it were me, all of these joint committee members must join us as we embark on a strategic planning weekend workshop or a session for four days, three days. In that session, we look at all the challenges, all the possible young persons who seek assistance support, all the young persons who seek funding. When we do that, honorable member, believe me, it's a recipe that can only work because you've created now a program of action that doesn't need to be policy driven. It doesn't have to be a policy. It must be a program action that is policy driven. Apologies for, for that. Because remember, we'll be guided by the policies. That is the only way young people will be able to really get NIDA on their lips. Because as I come back into this interview, your words, Honorable Mbach, as I come back into this interview, it was still concerning that young people still say, but Mikalo, what is this that you're applying for? Mikalo, what is this agency that you're applying for? And, and yes, indeed, it's, at times it's very sad. Um, it's sad because young people yearn for such programs and such initiatives. And at the end of the day, some of us even have colleagues or friends who serve on this board or have served on this board. And we hear how young people say, I've appealed to Honorable Maseko, but she's not come back. You said she's your friend. You said you know her. You gave me a number. She's not come back. And I think what the agency needs to realize is that the agency is no different to a corona vaccine. It's no different to a tuberculosis injection. There is a disease and virus of young people needing help and unemployment. We are the vaccination. Be it that we vaccinate young people by simply taking the young men off the street and simply through the local office of NIDA, whether there's a kitty that exists, take that young man and have him buy his supplies and sign off a requisition of 3,000 rand for this young man who has a car wash somewhere there. Because all he needs is the, is, is the chamois to wash the cars. He needs the cloth. We don't worry now about compressors. Let him grow the business because now we teach him how to be a businessman. He comes back six months later. He says, Mr. Milan, thank you for that, man. Yarr, you helped me liquor, man. But now I need a compressor, man. The cars are like five, six, seven. Now it's no longer two cars. And now I need to wash the cars for now. Because now we're creating a young person a desire to grow more. And that is what I'm saying. It only starts at the basic point. We need to go back to the drawing board and say, but look, we've been funding young people, giving them money. Is it really, the, is the challenge in society really young people needing funding for businesses? Is that really the only challenge? No, it's not. The greater challenge is that there's young people who are, there's a group of young people who still don't know where to go to in the new direction. There's a group of young people who are vulnerable and may soon be destitute. And there's the complete destitute young person. 
we must be able to, as an agency, to create and devise across that weekend workshop. I can even imagine and picture that you're all seated there and you're giving your input as observers, you're speaking and engaging, creating a path document that says, this is what we're going to achieve in the next year. Committee members, when I come back next year, we're going to come back with a report that says, these are the many young people who visit the NIDA centers, or the NIDA offices. We have about 35 learners a day. Whether they come in to do homework, whether they come in to do research, that's our role. Because they live in informal settlements. They live in areas where they don't get the assistance. Whether it comes for business plan or proposals, we'll be able to give a report that speaks to all of those areas that we've ticked. I believe more than anything else, Irak Bar member, that is how we're going to change the perception. Because it's not, it's going to be five young people who say they've done nothing for me. But it's going to be that three or four will say, but they did something for me. Maybe you missed this, come back again and do what you can. In someone, I think someone created a post on Facebook and I saw this whole post of NIDA, NIDA, and someone came and commented on this post that was created saying, Mikalo, we want you for NIDA. And this young person is angry. He's angry and he says, what is he going to do for us? It's just the same as all of them in that NIDA process and we must be happy and, 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 and fight for him. I did not answer with emotions, Honorable Natasha. I did not answer with anger because I was once there. And I was able to give guidance to the young person and say, this is what I would like to achieve if I had to be on the board. I will make that office accessible and I will only ask the board and the committee to give me more funding for another office based on evidence and facts and proof. I will come back and show you that there's more than 180 or 280 learners per day you come to, 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 to the offices. We need more offices. Through that, we need to then empower our staff. No longer must there be administrators in the offices, but we now have to push that they get their licenses. We have to push that they get the needed facilitation certificate through CETA. Why am I saying this? Because then they become the masterpiece yeah, puzzles so that give facilitation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Milan. And the next honorable member is Honorable Maluleke. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And <laughs> Bob Malan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Mr. Malan, effective governance in public service encourages better decision making and efficient use of resources. I think you'll agree with me on that one. So how would you ensure good governance in the National Youth Development Agency if you are recommended for appointment in the board? And what are the five main principles of good governance within the context of a democratic government and efficient public service? What would you do to ensure that NYDA conform to the principles of good governance? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Mama Ruleka. I, I understand that you were very tired when you introduced yourself, but I knew you were not going to let me go easy. <laughs> I knew that was going to come. I expected that heat from um, Honorable Mbacha, but now I see you took it for you for yourself. I think first and foremost, not I think, I believe. Let me stop thinking. Let me start living in the moment where I claim and believe. It starts here, Honorable Leg. It starts with me. You can have all the statutory rules that exist. You can have all the policies that guide the protection of assets of government, how leaders should be. It starts with me. You will recall in the last interview process, Mayor Nguyen Nguyen Daba still raised a point after I answered the question similar to this, and she says, so you are going to push ethics? And I said, yes, ma, I'm going to push ethics. Because that's where it starts. Whoever is at the helm leading, whether it's individually to myself or to a collective, there must be an authoritative mentality that says that we are guided here by statutory rules. We are guided here by principles. And before I even go to those principles, I must be very clear that I will not be taken lightly by colleagues when it comes to protecting the interests of government, when it comes to working towards the development of young people. Because in starting with that one, there's then a mentality that instills in other members a mentality to say that we are not here for playing, but we are here to do what is just and what is right. That we are here to give adherence to the principles of good governance that require of us to ensure that the assets of government are not used for the self-gain of individuals that require of us to ensure that any statutory legality that lies there and is supposed to guide us, we must ensure that we make sure, we make sure that that is at the forefront of every engagement or every decision we make. 
We must ensure that in our positions of government, wherever we serve, we uphold the office that we serve and ensure that the office that we serve in continues to be an office where people can trust and have hope and believe in. We must ensure that as public servants, where we are at, the need and the desire is not one that seeks to self-ameliorate or self-empower us only, but it should be able to consciously tap in year and year so as to remind us of where we are. In that, we are then able to have a NIDA that is able to account not only to itself, but to account to the principle and to the moral standing, because we can speak about the PFMA. We can speak about the Public Financial Management Act. We can speak about the Financial Regulation Act. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, as we are now in a country where you see how corruption is going about, these acts have been there. These acts are still there. But it's not about the acts. It's about those who are behind the acts and enforcing the acts and ensuring that the acts are upheld. It is those who are behind those principles who ensure that those principles are upheld. In build up to this interview process, I asked myself, why am I so nervous? I've always worked for youth development. What could it be? Could it be that the reward of being at NIDA is one where, of course, I see myself getting a, a, a higher position in being able to serve as young people and a position that has resources to be able to uplift them? Because that would be the reward for society that's been struggling. What could it then be else? And it hit me. It is the mere fact that when I told myself I'm applying for this position, I'm applying for it for the interest of those young people who I've developed, worked with, who I walk past, who I see struggle. Because that is where it starts, Mama. It's a simple twofold reality. It is one of theoretically understanding the role of every legislation and good governance and the importance of how we have to adhere to it. It is about the moral standpoint of us as persons. We do not need to literally take an oath of office, but we have to at least with the moral understanding and principle of guilt take an oath to do what has to be done for the young individuals. And we have to at all times reflect. We have to at all times work in order to meet the standards of this principle of good governance. We have to have at all times work so much that we ask ourselves every day, have I achieved what is needed in good governance? And have I fulfilled the aspirations of what a good governance structure does in attaining its objectives and uplifting its people? I'm hoping that answers you, Ma. I mean, I thought you were going to make a follow-up question. Yes, Baka. No, I, I, I don't want to disappoint you by keeping quiet. Um, I, I thought, let me, let me say something. Um, we, we are confronted by coronavirus as we speak, which requires that uh, something must be done for the young people. More than 70% of our young people are unemployed. Now, it's important to talk about it um, and get an answer from you that if you were to be appointed, what is it that you think you would do to respond to the challenge that we are confronted with? Taking into account that there's not much that you carry within the budget of uh, the NYDA, how would you then ensure that beyond what you have as part of NYDA, you then um, deal with all the ills that are confronting young people on a bigger scale? And that's what let me ask you that so that I don't keep quiet because you'll feel that I've let you down. Thank you so much, Honorable Bacha. I think maybe I missed you actually. I think I missed you. It's a good thing I came back. Now you're asking me questions. But you're asking me a question that I really am happy that you're asking me because now you, 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 you're allowing me to engage more and give you some sense of what capabilities I would have too. I think the first phase and first stanza of your question could possibly be answered already by various ideas I've given in the process of the interview process, what the capabilities are and what we have. But however, let me paint a practical picture. And please note, Chairpersons, I'm not um, I'm, I'm coercing the committee to put in a certain position or guide me. I'm just, I'm just giving a practical example. Here I am as the board member of NIDA, Chair, Deputy Chair, doesn't matter which designation. I'm in the Western Cape and we have a program of action that runs COVID-19 hits. Remember that I mentioned just previously that we ought to act as if we are vaccine to all the challenges and concerns that young people face. And we ought to occupy all spaces that young people face. Now, Anwar Baka, there's one word in the, in the, in the acronym of the, uh, the NYDA. There's one word that is important. 
And that, then that one word obliges us to act at all instances, doesn't matter when it is. It's that word youth. If we were simply a national development agency, then we could have been lost and not know where to go to. But because it says youth, that is where we are, that's our starting point. Now, I love that you mentioned the issue of constraint of budget or so, and I'm very, and you can hear that I'm very passionate about this idea of thinking outside of the box. It cannot be always about the budget that you have as NIDA. Because now we look at COVID. We look at the young people first. Where do they all fall in various departments? They fall within the arts because many of them are artists and they do, and they do drama. Many of them run art schools and communities, like one in Cryfontaine known as Light of Life that runs the arts theaters, charging people 20 from a shack in, in Cryfontaine. Young people are also head of households who look after younger brothers and sisters. They are then affected by which department? Social development. Young people then own farms, or they are trying, as, as, as the Honorable um, um, Low, my apologies, I forgot your, your new surname, Honorable Low. As the Honorable Low has stated, they grow a spinach. Who do we have there? We have the Minister Mkibisi Squatcha in terms of rural development. We have Minister Barbara Creasy in terms of agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. I hope you see where I'm going to with this, Honorable Bach. I'm not even touching on the monies that I have within NIDA. I'm not even talking about the constraint that you have. You have a concern with the constraint. So let's say we're in my office and you're coming to me and you're in my office. I'm in your office now and you're raising this. But I'm telling you in my office, I hear what you're saying. I get the concern. I'm not worried about the constraints because as far as I understand and know, departments are ready to give what they can to young people and ready to give in assistance. And because of that, it would be also important that as a national development agency, in order to alleviate our people from the constraints of COVID, is to be the voice for young person in those structures. Now, whether it is labor under Minister Tulas and Nessi, and as I said, I'm a trade unionist, I must be there. Why? Not because I'm a trade unionist, because there's a huge amount of young people who work in the working class, who work in factory levels, who work in railways. And we must be able to be there to occupy the space to provide the needed strategies and to give the proposals to government and say, look, we know COVID has hit. This is the amount that we need in support or practical um, sense of what you can provide us, Minister, for food parcels or so, for young people in Hout Bay, for young people in Kailicha, for young people wherever. Because according to my local office in Neisner, these are the stats I've received in what is needed. And I need to do the best that I can to give to young people what I can. I've not even touched on my own budget. I've not even touched on my constraints. In that, young people also feel safe and secured because the agency has become an agent advocating for the upliftment of the, of the struggle in terms of COVID. That then also means that one goes over to other areas, be it arts. And I mean, I am an ambas I'm, I'm currently an ambassador to the Artscape in partnership to, to the European Union under Chancellor, Chancellor Markel, and I've just returned from France. They use a simple mechanism of ensuring that at all times, young people use the economic environments that they're in and they teach them how to use those areas as a, as a means of emancipating them. We are in a crisis with COVID. Mine is to say as a board member, I would give the needed guidance and reminding young people that we are not far gone or no far lost. Secondly, I would ensure that as one who gives oversight and who's there, because you're leading society, you're leading young people. Who do they go to? They don't have to follow the, bureau, the bureaucratic I'm lying of having to speak to that person to get to that DG to get no I'm here for that young person we are the agency that ought to be engaging and sitting down with you Honorable Bach and saying this is the areas of constraint and this is where it's needed and move over to NETLAC so we can engage with NETLAC and trade unions and parties and say but look we might not be party to NETLAC because you believe you can't sit here because we're not an entity or company however we are party to it because there are young people who are affected and that's the only reason why we must be able to emancipate them without even worrying about the constraints it's because our position is inherently to be there all over because of that area of youth development, because of that area of youth, and that remains ever so important. So it would, it would be about, about providing an oversight of what the challenges are and the constraints, taking those constraints forward, not to sit, and I don't want to have a bilateral with leaders, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you some I don't want to have a bilateral with you in terms of telling you the idea. I want to come and sit down and tell you, this is what we have to offer under PT. This is the challenge young people are facing. This is where we're at in stats. Because once I give you that, Honorable PT, I'm very sure you're going to give me the money or give me the assistance because I'm not giving you something in the air. I'm giving you stats that are right here. I'm giving you indications that are right here. And more importantly, when we look at COVID-19, we jump and we hear about unemployment is going high. People, we are saying unemployment is going high and we are not able to deal with unemployment. Mine is simple, and I learned this from a gentleman at, at, at Saktu who heads the industrial policy. We must look at the industrial indicators. Because the moment we say that employment affects us all and it's low, we're looking at it at a hindsight view, a generic view. We must be able to, as a national development agency, say, can we look at the indicators? What is the issue within retail? What are the indicators there? What's the sufferings? What are the indicators within mining? Because remember, there's also young people there in informal business. 
In that way, we're then able to neutralize this issue of unemployment because now we know where to go to, who to engage with and who to talk to, to get the needed assets and support. Before the chair says time's up, let me pause. I hope I've answered you, Maubach. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I must say, Honorable Chair, that it's very encouraging to know that uh, Mr. Malan is actually following the work of the Portfolio Committee. And I hope that uh, in your eyes and those of many other young South Africans, Mr. Malan, we are doing a good job. Um, you have noted that, Mr. Malan, you are actually, or you have worked, or you are currently working with a number of young people in different sectors, uh, which include the civil society organization, as well as young people in churches. Now, if you are appointed to the board, what innovative strategies would you use to further strengthen government's uh, a, a program of moral regeneration, especially working with the young people in the religious sector, as well as the civil society organizations? Because you'd find that most of the time, as, as, as honorable members have, have actually asked, um, that there is a perception that the National Youth Development Agency is only accommodating young people in the political space. And you'd find that the youth in churches uh, are not fully participating or involving themselves in government programs, as well as the work of the National Youth Development Agency. Now, in relation to the moral regeneration program that government has, what strategies would you use in accommodating young people in civil society organizations, as well as young people in churches? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Masiko. Your question goes to heart. It goes to my heart because that is where I became who I am today. And it was all of those moral areas that were important. And as I said, growing up as an orphan with no mother, as only child, you, don't, you couldn't only imagine the risks I was, I, was, I was prone to right there in society. But thankful she left me with doors open and people to look after me. It goes, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm a rhetoric or broken cassette, but I like how the questions are going because it's as if it speaks to where I want to take the point and paint the picture to you. It goes back to that important point. We look at the amendment bill of the National Youth Development Agency that says now we have to look at provincial and local offices. The local office in conjunction with the provincial office should be able to know what kind of community it's working in. Because remember, we then have the moral strategy, or we have the agenda on what, what moral technique we want to use to addressing those moral issues in society, such as teenage pregnancy, such as substance abuse, such as gang violence. Now, I've been there, Honorable uh, Mas Maseko, eh? Maseko, ma Maseko, Masiko, Masiko. I've been there, Honorable Masiko. I've been there in 2008 when I saw that young students, irrespective that we grew up together and they were my best friends, they were robbing kids as they leave from school. Now, imagine me. I was not NIDA at that time. And imagine NIDA office was just two kilometers or three away from where my school is. And it's empty with an administrator. And yeah, I am as an activist or a youth leader, my school, RCL chair. I then created an initiative and I said, can we not organize and have a peace building forum? Let's organize society. Now, imagine that organizing being done by NIDA. I want you to try and just picture those as a similarity and congruency. I'm doing it, but imagine if it was NIDA. And if and when you imagine it, Honorable Mas, uh, Maseko, imagine me doing it literally. Yeah, bon? So now we have the now we have identifications of what's going on in society. Now then I organize and I say, but where is the police? Police have a duty to patrol at least to the schools for the safety of children. How do we deal with this issue? At that time, I was also embarking on programs on school to deal with substance abuse, to deal with teenage pregnancy. And at that time in Atlantis, there was a high school, I won't mention the name. It had made, it had made a decision in its, in its governance structure to build a nursery on school. The purpose of the nursery was that if you came in with your child and your teenage pregnant, you then bring your child in and you leave your child the nursery, you go to your class, you come break time and you feed your child. We fought it vehemently. We said if we are trying to emancipate young persons and give a direction that morally says it's incorrect to accept that the child is pregnant, not judge them, not make them feel isolated in society, how can a school embark on such a decision that later left the school with 31 learners pregnant within the schooling environment in that year? It's, it's important for us as the agencies to be visible and to be there at all time. 
Honorable Masiko, if it means that I make it to this board and every day like having a sanitizer in my car must have the NIDA banner in my boot and you come to Cape Town and you've been invited to address a certain church service or anything, you really must be done. I will run immediately and come to you. And if you don't call me, I will tell you, why did you not call me? I think you understand where this comes from. And you know where this um, strategy comes from of having to call leaders when they're in places. That is where young people know. But who is this guy? He's from NIDA. But what do they do? In that way, on Masiko, as a strategy. Because remember, we are here now where young people don't care around to know the National Youth Development Agency. I'm there with my banner addressing a church service, reminding young people that the, the Bible teaches us that we ought to be in this way and that way. But now I'm able to also speak and engage young people in network after service or after an engagement that takes place. And in that, I have a piece of paper. Write me your name and your surname and write me your number and your email address. We are going to start a group within this area of the community and we will deal with issues such as these within your church. If you need me to come, we'll be here because we are the National Youth Development Agency. We must occupy all spaces. And churches face a challenge today. Young people don't want to go to youth anymore like we used to. Because parents have lost the plot. Parents have just decided, no, it's fine. My cousin is 14 years old, but I'm still very clear. You come in here at say, half past seven during the week if it's school. And if it's weekend, you can come in eight o'clock because I know he's down the road. Other than that, you make sure you are home. So the moral issue starts with us reminding people of that moral context. But in also being able to create programs, Honorable Maseko, that alternatively redirect them. Because in order to attain the moral issue or to, over, to, to, to meet the standard of the, moral, of the moral program or the agenda, in swaying a young person from drinking, in swaying a young person from being pregnant, we must first be real. Young people will be sexually active, it's proven. Ours must be to be honest. Are you using protection? Are you engaging in stuff that are important to keep you safe? Young people will drink. It's important that we engage on the safety issues. Fetal alcohol syndrome, it's one of the causes I've, I've, I've facilitated. I'm passionate about this on my sake because this is what I do. I do facilitation and training. Any community can call me, whether it's where, out there, wherever. I didn't have a car then. I would take a bus, sleep over somewhere just to wake up the next morning and do. So I think Hi, that's Mr. important on my sake to run those programs. Uh, 45 minutes. Thank gone. you, Chair. At least you said time is up three times to me today, Chair. Not so much as the last time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Malan. Uh, Chairperson, I think we're done. Yes, Chair. Um, let, me take the let me take the opportunity, Chairperson, to thank Mr. Chair. Malan. Chair. Yes, um, Chair. 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 Thank you, Chair. Do you Chair. still have a question? Yes. But the... But the problem now, Member Dongeni, I'm sorry, we are already over time. Okay, it's fine. Okay, keep your, keep your question ma, for tomorrow for the next candidate. Oh, never mind, I know. I'm from another mother, ne? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with you tomorrow. Evening. Now okay. I'm from another mother. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> okay, 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 Mr. Marlan, <laughs> let me take the opportunity to thank you <laughs> for honoring the invite to come for an interview before this panel. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you also for your honest remarks and the way you handled the interview. Um, I want to wish you well, Mr. Malan, on your future endeavors and also wish you luck. Um, do you have any question that you want to ask the panel? Related you you, the you, you won't believe um, how many mm -mm's came from the floor now when you asked if I should ask a question. If there's one thing I can say, this committee has always abused me. They always book me at night to come for an interview when they're tired so they can wake up. So I think they've woken up enough and there's no questions for me to pose, but to simply say thank you once again for bringing me back. And I can only hope that you bringing me back was brought back on the right merit, on the right principle, because you believe. And I hope that as someone who came in new, as you met him the first time, I can have proven to you that there is a capability and ability to work with you and the committee. I thank you very much. I wish you all of the best and safety and keep safe. And please maintain social distance. Thank you, Mr. Malan. Um, you are um, excused. Let me also, Chairperson, take the opportunity to thank you for your leading role in this interview process. Thank you to all our members. Um, it was a long day. 
but um, I need to thank you for your commitment. I need to thank our support staff, administratively, our legal team, communication, IT. Thank you and I wish um, all of you a peaceful night's rest. And um, I'm going to hand over to the chairperson to close the meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Mr. Malan. You are excused. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Ufuna? Chair, Uslalo Ukoshwe Ukubonga with translation service, and we'd like to hear them for the last time. Chairperson, for God to thank the translation <laughs> services. I uh, to the translators to thank you. Translation, translators, you worked hard today. Thank you very much. Even tomorrow, you still need you. It's still a day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, honourable members. Uh, honourable members, it was a long day, and uh, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Tomorrow we are starting at at ten. Tomorrow uh, the first candidate is at uh, nine thirty. So um please be ready. And so tomorrow the documents must be ready. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <coughs>